Here we go again. Got another quadratic. And again, we're going to look at completing the square. Remember, we want to find, say, that max or min. Might be able to guess if it's max or min already from the previous video, but we'll get there. We'll put it into vertex form. We'll complete the square to find our vertex, our maximum or minimum point, depending on the case as it is. So what do we got? We got minus 8x squared minus 7x plus 2 equals 0. So we can see our a term in the quadratic is not 1. That tends to make things more tricky, but still definitely solvable. Okay. Well, remember, last time we looked at completing the square, we focus on these two terms, the first two terms. This is not a perfect square. We're going to make it into one. Well, we want to focus on this term right here. And what we're going to actually do is take out the minus 8. We want it to be in the brackets just x squared. So we're factoring out a minus 8. Remember what does that mean? I divide all the terms in brackets by minus 8. So minus 8x squared divided by minus 8 is x squared. But minus 7 divided by minus 8. Minus 7x divided by minus 8. Well, the minuses will cancel, so we'll get plus, minus and a minus. Remember, when you t factor out a negative, all the signs change. This became a plus, this becomes a plus as well. But, we basically get 7 over 8x. I can put the x up there, I can put it here, it doesn't matter. All that in brackets, and this plus 2, we can just leave it out here. It's all on its own, doing its thing, relaxing. So, we now want to complete the square. We're going to follow the same trick we looked at last time. Same little thing we want to do. Remember, we take this term right here. Last time this term didn't change, but we want to bring it in the bracket. We had to factor out this minus 8, so we're going to take this here, this 7 over 8 term. And remember, what did we do? We divided by 2, and then we squared it. Looks a little messier this time. Same exact math, though. So 7 over 8 divided by 2 is the same as 7 over 16. And we're going to have to square that. So we've got to actually figure that out. What's the square? We've got 7 squared is 49. 16 squared... 100... Um, yeah, bear with me for a second. I apologize should be, what, 256? Hopefully that's right. If not, I have to go back and fix that in edits. So we got 49 over 256, and that's what we're adding into both sides, remember. So we're adding that into the bracket here, back to my orange pen, minus 8, x squared, plus 7 over 8, x, and then plus 49, over 256 plus 2. Well, remember, we have to add it to this side too. But we got to be a little careful. We didn't just add 49 over 256. What we did is add 49 over 256 times minus 8. This whole part we added was in the bracket. So if we were taking it out, it would have to be multiplied by a minus 8. So when we're adding to this side, we also have to consider that. We're actually adding this 49 over 256 times minus 8. So we're adding this to both sides. Okay, great. Figure that out in a second. Let's come back here. Minus 8 sticks around. And remember, this is now a perfect square. What do we do? We look at this term right here, the 7 over 16. We're going to have x plus 7 over 16 all squared. Remember, expand that out if, you don't, if you're a little concerned. And you should get this back, this part right here, plus 2. All equaling this ugly mess right here, which should be, well, minus 392 over 256, which we could reduce down as well. We'll do that in a second, but what we also want to do is add this to both sides, which I'm going to actually give myself more room to do. So I'm going to reduce it down to the next step, 
x plus 7 over 16 squared still plus 2. And if we wanted to, we could have divided both top and bottom by 2 to reduce this down a bit. So what do we get? I'm going to, well, actually hedge my bets and leave enough room to add and subtract it from both sides. So if we to, were to subtract this, we would get, or yeah, we're going to divide top and bottom by 2 because we want to reduce this down. Make ourselves a little easier. Make a fraction that's not as horrendous to deal with. So we got to do 6 and 196 all over 128, which can be reduced even further. And you can keep doing this. You can keep dividing by 2 until you get down reduced enough as far as it can go. And in our case, I'm going to hedge my bets, say equaling again, minus 196. So this becomes 98. This becomes 64. Oh, can keep reducing. Keep dividing by 2. I mean, if you figured out what you actually could divide it by, you can, keep going, you can make it shorter and jump there. But 49 over 32. And really, that should be as far as we can reduce it. So, it's a minus. What are we going to do? We're basically adding 49 over 32 to both sides. And I think I probably ran out of room, so I'll write it right underneath. We're adding 49 over 32 to both sides. If you really want to, you could have also turned this into a fraction. Could have just divided it out on your calculator, made it into a fraction. And so what do we got? Minus 8x plus 7 over 16 plus 2. Well, we want to make these the same denominator if we're going to add them in a second. So we can think this is the same as writing 64 over 32 plus 49 over 32. Since we added and subtract the same thing on the other side, we've got zero. Starting to get a little tight on room here. Should be able to finish it. X plus 7 over 16 squared. And then we got uh, 1 13 over 32 equals zero. So the math has been ugly, but the results end up being the same as before. We can actually switch to blue right, to write out our vertex. Remember, we take this part, that's our x, the minus of that is our x anyway. So our vertex in this case is minus 7 over 16. And the y coordinate is 1, 1, 3 over 32. That would be our vertex. Now is it a maximum or minimum point? Remember, we look at the front of the equation. In this case, a minus. A minus means we would get a parabola that did this. So this vertex in our case would be a maximum. A maximum point is what we just solved. Sure, the math was ugly. Numbers were a little awkward. You might have preferred to simply divide this out and get an actual decimal number. It would be a bit of an approximation, but still. Depends on what you're looking for. You would have solved your maximum. We completed the square. We put it into vertex form, found our vertex, which happens to be a maximum since there's a negative in front of our equation. And that's all we need to do.